you may wish to pause the video before listening on to the solution here. And what we can see from these graphs is that we have an electric potential in the X direction that is decreasing as we move along the X axis. And then at the same time, as we move along the Y axis, the electric potential is increasing. And there is a neat relationship between these changing potentials and the electric field. So since there is a changing electric potential as we move along the x-axis and there's a changing potential as we move along the y-axis, the reason for that change in potential is because there's an electric field in this environment. We can calculate that electric field by using the relationship between the electric field and that change in potential. We can see this relationship is quite simple. The electric field is going to be the negative change in potential over change in position. And that's what we're going to be able to extract from the graph. So for example, applying this in the x direction, we could attach little x subscripts to these values, and then we'll take a look at the graph. We can mark this point here as our sort of initial point, and then this point over here could be our final point. And what we're gonna do is calculate first the change in potential. So a change in a quantity is just the final value minus the initial value. The final potential at this point here, you can see is negative two times v sub s, but v sub s is 500. So negative two times 500 is negative 1000. And that is in volts. That's your final potential. Subtract your initial potential, which is zero volts. And then we're gonna divide that by our final position, which we can see from the graph is 0 0.4 meters. And then subtract your initial position, which is zero meters. Very good. So you'd pick up your calculator and you would simplify this and you would see that the electric field in the x direction is 2500. This will be in newtons per coulomb. So that we will use soon to calculate the force acting on the electron in the x direction. But first we need the electric potential, excuse me, the electric field in the y direction. So it's gonna be a very similar calculation. We're gonna do the electric field in the y direction. That's gonna be negative change in potential in the y direction over change in position in the y direction. Let's select the origin again as our initial point. The final point is gonna be right here we can choose that as our final point because this is a nice constant slope while the electron moves along the y-axis here. So we can really choose any two points. We choose this one because that electric potential is quite legible from the graph. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five ticks in order to get to 500 volts, which means each tick is 100 volts, and we are at one, two, three, four ticks. So 400 volts is that final electric potential in the y direction. So we'll have negative, and then we'll have the 400 volts. Subtract the initial potential, which was 0 volts. And then let's put this over the final position, which again is 0.4 meters. And then subtract the initial position, which is 0 meters. And when we compute that, we get an electric field in the y direction equaling negative 1,000 newtons per coulomb. So now we have the electric field in both the x and the y direction. We can use those electric fields to calculate the electric force. You may remember from a previous chapter that the electric force is very simply the charge value multiplied by the electric field. And this question asked us to compute the force in unit vector notation. So here's how that would work. We would simply, for the x direction, we're gonna take the charge of an electron and then we're gonna multiply that by the electric field in the x direction. And then because that's the x direction, we're gonna symbolize that by i hat. That's what unit vector notation does. And then we're gonna add the charge of the electron multiplied by the electric field in the y direction. And because that's the y direction, we use j hat to indicate that direction. So that's the unit vector notation setup. Let's go ahead and plug in the known values. And we've plugged in those values. Notice the charge on an electron is that negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And when we simplify this in the x direction, it looks like we get negative four times 10 to the minus 16th. This is gonna end up as Newtons. It's an electric force. And then we have I hat. And then in the y direction, we work that out and we get a positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 16th. And that is also in Newtons because it is an electric force. We put J hat to indicate the y direction, and here is the unit vector answer for the electric force acting on the electron.